In late 2022, a switch was flipped. ChatGPT was released to the public, and overnight, the global financial system changed direction. In the blink of an eye, trillions of dollars, not billions, trillions, flooded into the stock market. Companies like NVIDIA transformed from gaming hardware manufacturers into the most valuable entities on planet Earth. Microsoft and Google engaged in a terrifying arms race, pouring the GDP of entire nations into building data centers. The narrative was simple. Artificial intelligence is the new electricity. If you don't buy in now, you will be left in the dust. But as we settle into this new reality, a lot of very smart people are looking at the math and they're starting to get nervous. We are seeing a massive disconnect between the money being spent to build AI and the money AI is actually earning back. It's a discrepancy that looks suspiciously like the months leading up to the 2000.com crash. Are we witnessing the greatest technological revolution in history? Yes, but are we also sleepwalking into a financial buzzsaw that could wipe out portfolios and reshape the economy? Also, yes. To understand if this house of cards is about to fall, we have to look past the hype and look at the plumbing. We need to understand a terrifying economic concept known as the railroad paradox. Before we get to the railroads, we have to understand where we are sitting right now on the emotional map of the markets. Every single time a revolutionary technology is introduced, humans react in the exact same way. It happened with the radio, it happened with the internet, and it is happening with AI. This pattern is often called the Gartner hype cycle. It starts with the innovation trigger. That was the release of ChatGPT. Suddenly, everyone sees magic. This leads to the second phase, the peak of inflated expectations. This is the gold rush phase. This is where investors stop looking at balance sheets and start trading on pure vibes. FOMO, the fear of missing out, takes the wheel. During this peak, you hear things like, this time is different, or profitability doesn't matter yet. Companies add AI to their press releases and their stock jumps 20%. It feels like free money, but gravity always wins. Eventually, the technology, no matter how amazing it is, fails to deliver on the impossible timeline the market demanded. This leads to the trough of disillusionment. The bubble pops. The tourists go home broke. The media starts writing articles about how AI was a fad. However, that's not the end of the story. From the ashes of the crash, the real work begins. This is the slope of enlightenment, where the technology actually matures and becomes useful, just quietly and slowly. The trillion dollar question is, where are we right now? Most data suggests we are teetering right at the top of that peak of inflated expectations. We are pricing companies as if AI has already fixed the economy, when in reality, most businesses are still just figuring out how to use a chatbot to write emails. But to really understand why this gap between expectation and reality is so dangerous, we have to travel back in time to the 1840s, to a muddy field in England, to look at a disaster that mirrors our current situation almost perfectly. This specific insight comes from the work of Tomas Poyo, the author of Uncharted Territories. He draws a haunting parallel between today's GPU shortage and the British railway mania of the 19th century. In the 1840s, the new electricity was the steam train. It was obvious to everyone that trains were going to change the world. They were faster, stronger, and more efficient than horses. It was a guaranteed win. So British investors went insane. They threw the modern equivalent of billions of dollars into building railway tracks. They planned lines connecting every tiny village to every other tiny village. Parliament authorized thousands of miles of track. The price of railway shares skyrocketed. But here is the catch. Building the tracks, the infrastructure, was incredibly expensive. This is so expensive. And once the tracks were built, there simply weren't enough passengers or goods to justify the cost. The utility was real, but the demand wasn't high enough to pay back the construction costs. The result? The bubble burst. Thousands of investors lost their life savings. Railway companies went bankrupt by the dozen. But here is the twist, and this is the part you need to pay attention to. The tracks didn't disappear. The infrastructure remained. The companies that bought the bankrupt railways for pennies on the dollar eventually made a fortune. The internet followed the same pattern in the late 90s. We laid thousands of miles of fiber optic cable. The companies that laid the cable, like Global Crossing, went bust. But that cheap, abundant cable is exactly what allowed Google and Facebook to exist 10 years later. Today, we aren't laying tracks, we are buying NVIDIA GPUs. We are building gigawatt-scale data centers. We are overbuilding the infrastructure because everyone is terrified of having too little. As Poyo points out, for a tech giant like Meta or Google, overinvesting is a waste of money, but underinvesting means death. So they are forced to overbuild. 
We are currently paving the world with AI chips, creating a massive surplus of compute power. History tells us that the people building the shovel, NVIDIA, get rich first. But if the digging doesn't yield gold immediately, the shovel sellers eventually crash too. And that brings us to the biggest red flag of this entire saga, a simple math equation that currently does not add up. If you want to know if a business is real, you just check if they are making more money than they spent. Simple, right? Well, in the AI world, that balance sheet is looking terrifyingly lopsided. This problem was highlighted by David Kahn from Sequoia Capital, one of the most respected venture capital firms in the world. He calls it the $600 billion question. Here's the math. The tech giants, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Meta, are spending roughly $150 billion to $200 billion a year on capital expenditures, mostly on AI chips and data centers. Now, in the software world, you don't just want to break even, you need a margin. To justify that level of spending, the AI industry needs to be generating about $600 billion in annualized revenue right now. So, how much revenue is generative AI actually making? Optimistic estimates put it around $50 to $100 billion. That leaves a gap, an air pocket, of $500 billion. That is half a trillion dollars of investment that currently has no return. We are buying Ferraris to deliver pizzas. What? Sure, the pizza gets there faster, but you'll never pay off the car with the tip money. The bulls argue that this is just the beginning. They say the revenue will catch up later. And maybe it will, but the stock market is priced as if the revenue is already here. If companies like Microsoft or Google report even one or two quarters where their AI spending isn't resulting in massive profit growth, their stock prices could correct violently. But you might be thinking, wait, Microsoft is reporting cloud growth. OpenAI is making money. Well, that brings us to something even sketchier. It's a phenomenon called circular revenue, and it's effectively hiding the risk in plain sight. Imagine I give you $10. Then you use that $10 to buy a lemonade from my stand. I can now tell my investors, look, I made $10 in revenue. But did I really? No, I just moved money from my left pocket to my right pocket. This is the circular economy risk currently plaguing the AI industry. Here's how it works in the real world. Step one, a big tech giant, let's say Microsoft or Amazon, invests billions of dollars into a hot AI startup like OpenAI or Anthropic. Step two, that investment comes with strings attached. The startup is often contractually obligated to spend a huge chunk of that money on cloud computing services from, you guessed it, the big tech giant that just invested in them. Step three, the big tech giant reports this as cloud revenue growth on their quarterly earnings call. Wall Street cheers and the stock goes up. On paper, it looks like explosive growth. In reality, it's a subsidy. The money isn't coming from a real end customer buying a product, it's coming from venture capital and corporate balance sheets. If the funding for these startups dries up, if VCs stop writing checks because they aren't seeing profitable apps, this revenue evaporates instantly. The market is currently treating this circular cash flow as if it's sustainable, recurring revenue. It's not, it's a sugar high. And once the sugar crash hits, the withdrawal symptoms are going to be painful for everyone involved. But there is actually one thing that could pop the bubble even faster than the lack of revenue. Ironically, it's the technology getting too good. The entire premise of the current stock market boom is built on one assumption. To get smarter AI, we need bigger models. Bigger models need more data. More data needs more chips. Therefore, demand for NVIDIA chips will go up forever. This is the narrative that pushed NVIDIA past a $3 trillion valuation. But in late 2024 and early 2025, a ghost entered the machine. We started seeing efficiency shocks. A Chinese research lab released a model called DeepSeek. It was shocking not just because it was smart, but because it was incredibly cheap to train. It achieved performance comparable to the top American models, but it did so using a fraction of the computing power and a fraction of the cost. This sounds like good news, right? Cheaper AI is better for everyone. Well, it's good for users. It is terrible for the bubble. If AI models become hyper-efficient, companies don't need to build $100 billion superclusters. They might only need a $10 billion cluster. If Google and Meta realize they can get the same results with fewer chips, they will slash their orders from NVIDIA. This is the deflationary pressure of technology. If the hardware gets too good, the volume of sales drops. If this happens, the shovel sellers, the chip manufacturers, face a massive correction. Their pricing power collapses. The idea of infinite demand vanishes. The stock market is currently betting on inefficiency, betting that we will always need brute force to make AI work. 
If we solve the efficiency problem, the financial model for the hardware boom breaks. So with all these red flags, the circular revenue, the $600 billion gap, the railroad overbuilding, does this mean we are heading for a total collapse like the year 2000? Not necessarily. There is a massive difference between then and now, and understanding it is the key to surviving what comes next. When people hear the word bubble, they think of the dot-com crash, where the Nasdaq lost 78% of its value. Companies like Pets.com went to zero because they had no business model, no revenue, and were burning cash to sell dog food at a loss. That is not what is happening today. The companies driving the AI boom, Microsoft, Google, Meta, Apple, Nvidia, are the most profitable money printing machines in the history of capitalism. They have fortress balance sheets. They have billions in free cash flow. In 2000, the market was led by speculative garbage. In 2025, the market is led by monopolies. Even if their AI bets take five years to pay off, these companies aren't going bankrupt. Google can afford to waste $50 billion. Pets.com couldn't afford to waste $50. So we probably won't see a total market collapse where everything goes to zero. What we will likely see is a sector rotation or a correction. This is where the valuations of the hardware companies come down to earth. Nvidia might lose 30% or 40% as the market realizes the growth can't be infinite. The shovel trade will end. But remember the railroads? The tracks remained. Once the hype dies down, the infrastructure will be there. The application layer will rise. This is the next phase. The investors who win won't be the ones buying the chip makers at all-time highs. It will be the ones finding the companies that are actually using this cheap intelligence to revolutionize healthcare, finance, and energy. We are moving from the building phase to the utility phase. The building phase is chaotic, expensive, and bubbly. The utility phase is boring, steady, and where the real long-term wealth is generated. This brings us to the final verdict on the AI bubble. Is there an AI bubble? Almost certainly. The sheer amount of capital being poured into infrastructure outweighs the current revenue by a dangerous margin. We are overbuilding the railroad tracks, just like we did in the 1840s, and just like we did with fiber optics in the 90s. History tells us that a correction is coming. The hype will fade, the tourists will leave, and stock prices for the hardware giants will likely come down. But don't mistake a bubble bursting for the end of the technology. The internet didn't die in 2000, it grew up. AI isn't going anywhere, it is going to change the world, just not on the timeline that Wall Street is currently pricing in. The slope of enlightenment is ahead of us. The smartest move right now isn't to panic, but to be patient. The gold rush for the shovels is ending, but the gold rush for what we build with those shovels is just getting started. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the mechanics of the market, make sure to hit that like button. And if you want to understand more about the future of technology and money, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.